Hi, I'm Karen McKee, and in this video, I'm going to go over a few tips for those who struggle to write scientific papers in English, especially non-native speakers. The information I'm going to cover is based on my experience as an author and reviewer of scientific papers, as well as the literature on scientific writing techniques. Today I'm going to talk about the problem that non-native speakers of English face in writing scientific papers. Writing well is difficult for everyone, but writing in another language is especially challenging. Even those who have mastered the rules of English grammar may still find that their writing is not up to the standards of an academic journal. They get comments from reviewers like, this paper's writing lacks coherence, or this paper does not flow well, or the writing is unclear or ambiguous. Such comments often indicate that the problem is a failure to meet the expectations of an English-speaking reader. Comprehension of any piece of writing depends not only on the content, but how the words are put together in a sentence or paragraph, otherwise known as syntax. Those who think in their native language and then translate word by word into English may especially have problems producing text that is syntactically similar to what a native speaker would write. When the syntax fails to meet the reader's expectations, the reader must work harder to understand what the author is saying. Non-native speakers have the most difficulty with English syntax, but even a native speaker's writing may be unclear and difficult to understand because of confusing syntax. Making your readers work to comprehend your writing is not a good idea. So let's consider some ways to make your writing meet the expectations of an English-speaking reader. 1. Sentences written with the subject first, followed closely by the verb, are easier for the English-speaking reader to comprehend. Here, the verb form immediately follows the subject pans. In some languages, though, the subject and verb may be far apart in a sentence, but when there are many intervening words and clauses between subject and verb, the English-speaking reader must work harder to grasp the information. For example, consider this sentence. Although this sentence is understandable and grammatically correct, the reader struggles a bit to grasp what it is saying because the subject effects is separated from the verb were examined by 24 words. Here, I've revised the sentence to move the subject and verb closer together. This sentence is easier to comprehend because we first read that five effects of sea level rise were examined, then we get the list of those five effects. Now, separation of subject and verb may seem to be a minor cognitive burden for a reader. For a single sentence, it is minor, but if every sentence in your paper makes the reader work a bit harder, it adds up. They may tire and just stop reading. Does this mean you should always put subject and verb together? Well, no. A few intervening words are fine. For example, this sentence has a few words between concentration and has been increasing. But in general, it's a good idea to try to keep subject and verb as close together as possible to minimize the cognitive strain on the reader. Two. What your sentence is about needs to be in the topic position. Readers of English expect that whatever is mentioned first in the sentence is the main topic. Consider these two sentences. The first sentence tells the reader that the topic is wood boring beetles or insects. The second one suggests the topic is light gap formation or forest structure. If your main topic is focused on forest structure, the second sentence is the better choice. Three, put old information first in the sentence and new important information last. The idea here is to link sentences in a passage in a way that promotes coherence and cohesion. Here are two passages that illustrate this point. I've highlighted old information in blue and new information in red. You can pause the video to read it. 
This passage sounds awkward because the second and third sentences put the new information first. Here is a revision. The second passage flows better because the structure of the second and third sentences presents the old information first before asking the reader to consider new information. Four, what your paragraph is about should be in the topic sentence. In English, the first sentence in the paragraph identifies the topic of the passage. The middle sentences provide details about the topic, and the concluding sentence summarizes the point of the paragraph and prepares the reader for the next paragraph. Everything written in the paragraph should relate to the topic introduced in the opening statement in some way. Five, know when to use passive versus active voice. More journals these days are encouraging use of active voice, but many scientists are still being taught to write solely in passive voice. So it's important to know the difference between active and passive voice and when to use them. In passive voice, the subject of the sentence is acted upon by the verb. Passive construction has been the traditional choice in scientific writing because it conveys objectivity, but it can also sound robotic or stilted. In active voice, the subject is doing the action expressed in the verb. Active voice is usually clearer, more direct, and requires fewer words. Use of active voice can enliven your writing and make your material more readable. Use first-person active voice sparingly, however, because it puts the focus on the researcher and what they were doing instead of the science. A lot of sentences written this way becomes repetitive. Use of passive voice may be preferable in the description of methods. Look at papers in your target journal to see how they use passive and active voice and follow their example. Six. Use transitions to connect sentences and paragraphs. Transitional words, phrases, and sentences aid in creating logical flow in a passage. Here are a couple of examples of transitions highlighted in red. More examples of transitions are covered in another video. I'll put the link in the description below. Seven, use correct verbs to convey the strength of your claim. The first version uses a weak verb to show some uncertainty in the results. The second version is stronger. Depending on the strength of your data, select the appropriate verb. If you are having difficulty writing scientific papers in English, being aware of these seven points may help. I should also mention that you won't necessarily be able to apply all these fixes simultaneously in a single passage. In most cases, you'll need to choose the best approach as you write each sentence, paragraph, and section. Spend as much time as possible reading papers written by native speakers of English and notice how sentences are structured. Then take notes in English to summarize in your own words what the paper was about and what was found. Another suggestion is to keep a personal journal in English in which you write for 10 minutes or so about your day or whatever is on your mind. The point is that to improve your writing in English requires a lot of practice writing in English. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video if you found the information helpful.